Hi, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to take a bunch of little pictures and stitch them together and create this panorama. All right, let's get started. It's really easy. Affinity Photos made it super easy for us. We just go to File and New Panorama. You click on that, you click Add, and then you go to your computer wherever you've got the pictures that you took. And we're going to just click on the first one, hold the Shift key, click on the last one, and then that selects them all. And then click Open. And it will add them all here. And then you, if you change your mind, you can deselect it, and then it won't be added. So if you've got all the pictures that you want, you can just click Stitch Panorama. And it does take a few minutes. So while it's doing that, let me just say, if when you take the pictures to begin with, I highly recommend using the manual mode on your camera. That way, they're all exposed the same. As if you, if you use automatic or any other settings, sometimes it'll make a change that'll make it either too light or too dark on just one or two of the pictures. And so when you go to stitch them together, it doesn't blend very well. It looks kind of funny. You'll have a dark strip. It'll be easier to see in a minute what I'm talking about. So do try and use the manual mode on your camera. And if you're doing clouds, you want to kind of take them a little fast. Hold yourself nice and steady, but go a little fast because those clouds can change quickly and you don't want your clouds to change too much between photos. <laughs> that won't look very good either. All right, and there we go. That's what it came up with. And you can go back and deselect pictures if you don't want to add them, if you want to do it again, and then click Stitch Panorama again. And it will just add another one right here. And then you can choose the one you want, so you can just keep doing that. But we're just going to stick with the one because it does take time to process. So click OK. And then we wait for just a minute, and there we go. And now you can see all the pictures and how it put them together. And you can see where if one of them had been exposed differently, it would have a big line there. And I, does, I do think that Affinity tries to correct that, but it doesn't always do a super great job of it. <laughs> I've had some turn out a little funny when I wasn't using the camera right so all right and there that's the finished picture so now let me show you what to do with these edges we're just going to click apply you could crop you can do the cropping there but we're just going to go here and do it um, you can crop the picture down if you want to but I I don't like to lose the picture I don't want to shrink it so I have another way of fixing it but first I'm going to straighten the horizon. It's usually a little bit off. All right, click apply. Okay, so instead of cropping, I, um, I'm going to use a macro that I have. I made this macro. You can get it on my website for free if you want. But um, I saw somebody do this years ago, and uh, they went through all these steps to do the in painting for the transparent parts of the photo. So I, I went through it all and made a macro because it's just easier. So now all you have to do is just click the macro and it does it all for you. You don't have to think about anything. It will fill in all these gaps automatically. And it usually does a great job. In painting, I love in painting. It does a very good job in most cases. Depends on the picture. <laughs> And there it is. And it does, on this picture, it did a great job everywhere except right here. But this is really easy to fix. You know, you could go back and just crop out that little bit. But we are just going to use the clone tool and just fill it in. Take the road and just fill it all in like that, like it was supposed to be. So that's an easy fix. Now the rest of it turned out great. But we're going to actually get rid of this one. So this is the one that I've already uh, edited. Let's go back to our layers. And if you don't know how to use macros or install them or anything, I, ha I have a video about that. I'll put a link in the description below for that too so you can watch it. All right. This is what I did to this picture. Well, the first thing was I fixed the road. That was easy. I had to make, well, I didn't have to. I make a new layer. Every time I make an adjustment, I make a new layer. That way, if I want to get rid of something or change something, I can just get rid of the layer and start over. Instead of trying to, you know, control Z everything. All right. And then I found these, these suns, these light overlays. 
on the internet somewhere for free. You do have to give her your email address, but they, you know they're really nice. I like them. So I'll put the link to where I found those in the description also. So the first one I used was this one. And to use them, you just go to File, Place, find it on your computer, and then drag it wherever you want. And then you need to change it to screen. The blend mode needs to be screen. And then I lowered the opacity just because I wanted to. And then I actually added a mask to it. I thought it was too bright down here, so I just added a mask and used gray. I didn't use black because I didn't want to totally go away. So I just used a little gray and just went over it right there. And then I added another one there in the center and did the same thing, make it screen and lower the opacity. And then all I did after that was just add a curves layer. And this is what it looks like. It's just the typical S curve. I actually think it could be darker. And, and then I uh, decided I didn't like this shade of blue exactly. <laughs> so I used the selective color adjustment and changed it. So that's before and that's after. And all I did for that was you just come up here and I picked blues and I just moved the cyan all the way over, the magenta down a little bit, and the yellow and the black all the way over. And then I just did a dodge and burn layer because I needed this to be a little bit darker just right here in the corner to kind of direct the eye more over there. You don't want too much light on the edges. See, it's not that much, but it's just enough. In case anybody's wondering, this is the Great Salt Lake. This is part of it. That's Antelope Island over there. And Salt Lake City is way off in the distance down that way. We came here to look for buffalo, which we found. They're all over on the island, wandering around. So, I hope you found something useful in this video. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel for more. And thanks for watching.